chapter 4 says rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice let your moderation be known to all men the Lord is at hand be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be known unto God and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, 
whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do it. And the God of peace shall be with you always. Amen. The Bible says rejoice in the Lord. And again I say rejoice. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord. And again I say rejoice. Amen. Rejoice means be happy. Amen. Celebrate. Amen. This is important for us. And I want to encourage you this morning. May the joy of the Lord, may the grace of the Lord just fill your heart, your life. May you experience the, the power of God in every sphere of your lives. Can we just bow our heads together? Father, we love you. We adore you. We glorify your name. We thank you, oh God, that today as you, you challenge us from the word of the Lord to begin to keep our minds and our hearts stayed on you. That you challenge us, O oh God, that with everything, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let our requests be known unto you. So we stand here this morning. Lord, we, we come before your presence and we say, Lord, we need you to show up in our lives. We need you, O oh God, to manifest your glory. O oh God, spiritually, physically, emotionally, mentally. Father, to show up in our homes, show up in our families. Show up in our marriages, in our relationships, at our workplaces, at our schools, at our universities. Lord, we pray, O oh God, may the manifest presence of God always be in our lives. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. And everybody said amen. 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 It's good to have each one of you here today as we worship and as we praise God together. Amen. I want to encourage you just to worship God together with us. We know that the Lord will just bless us as we continue in His presence. Amen. God bless. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a beautiful day to praise the Lord. Amen. I don't know about you, but I've come just to bless Him. And today we're going to declare that He is Jehovah. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh. Yeah. Let's tell the world right now. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, let's sing. Let's tell the world the treasure that we found. Let's spread the name of God. Let's spread the name of Jesus all around. Come on, let's be a part of our Father's business. Let's be a part of our Father's business. We gotta stand up. Stand up and be His witness. And shout it. Let's shout it. Shout it. He's so amazing. Part of our Father's business. We gotta stand up with Jesus. And let's be the witness. Come on. Let's shout it. Hallelujah. He's so amazing. Kingdom and each nation. Help me this morning. 
all the ladies, he's so amazing, you're gonna speak that out right now, and all the guys out there, you're gonna say, cry Jesus right now, amen, come on, let's praise his name, let's bless the name of Jesus, oh, we worship you, let's go, let's bless his name, so everyone may see, just how he's love for us, just how he loves us, and you and me, come on, let's challenge kingdom and nation, Right now, Father God, God's love so great. Jesus loves us, and this is why we can declare that His love is so great this morning. Oh, Your love so great. the 
You are worthy, O Lord. This morning, we want to just pray for all of our children that are at school and those that are going to be writing exams, whether at school or even at university, some adults that are writing. Would you just stand where you are? We're going to just pray today. We, we're going to be praying. We have Tando that Tando that's writing her matric exams. We're trusting God that God will just be with her as well. Lord, we believe you today. Lord, we stand in the gap for our children. We stand in the gap for our brothers and sisters. All those that are engaged in writing exams. We pray to God this morning for the spirit of wisdom, a spirit of knowledge, a spirit of understanding, for favor and good success to be over our children, Lord. I pray, O oh Lord, that you would give them a diligent mind, an ability to take in information, understand it, to be able to apply it. Bring the, all things to their remembrance, Lord, as they answer questions, help them to interrogate the question. Help them, O oh God, to be able to answer a, appropriately and accurately. I pray, O oh Lord, for the Spirit of God to just be upon them. In the name of Jesus, I pray, O oh Lord, may favor and good success be over their lives. In the name of Jesus, we believe in you, O oh God, that you are going to watch over them. And even though this year has been a disruptive one, it's going to be, it will produce the best results. I pray, O oh Lord, that you, O oh God, will keep them physically, mentally, emotionally strong. O oh God, I pray for their families and the support systems. I pray, O oh God, that in this time, O oh God, that we would understand, O oh God, that as our children prepare, O oh Lord, that as we support them, that you, O oh God, was going to give them the victory. So we thank you for good success. We thank you for a spirit of excellence. An excellent spirit, O oh Lord. Like you blessed Solomon with wisdom. Uh, like you blessed, O oh God, Daniel, O oh God, with, with wisdom and insight. You blessed Moses, O oh God, with insight. O oh God, you blessed Joseph with insight. Lord, I pray, help them, O oh God, in every task that they would excel. In Jesus' name, amen and amen, amen. God bless you. Bless you, bless you. You may be seated, amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. The Lord is good. Amen. And so, yeah, worship team can set. If that aircon is worrying you, okay, just sit down. Amen. Amen. It's good to see all of you here this morning. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. We're going to continue with our series. We started last week uh, on building meaningful relationships. And I spoke about being a friend amen and what it means to be a friend i continued on that uh, that the bible says he that seeks to have friends must first be friendly amen so i hope you were practicing it amen this week you were a little bit friendly a little bit more friendly than you usually are i hope you weren't too friendly the wrong people amen but uh I, I believe that one of the things that is important is having friends, amen? And, um, and we understood the difference between acquaintances and friends. We understand the difference between colleagues and friends. Uh, I believe, uh, uh, and this was a, a statement I heard yesterday, that the currency of heaven is relationships, amen? That means meaningful, godly relationships is the currency of heaven and how many of you know that in order for god to do anything to bless you so when we say god your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven we understand that god's kingdom is manifest through people amen that means we are kingdom citizens we citizens the bible calls us ambassadors of the lord jesus christ and as ambassadors of the lord jesus christ an ambassador in the land that he is serving in, he is not a citizen. He is a citizen of the place that sent him. Amen. So you are a citizen of heaven here on the earth. So you carry the culture. You see the beauty part of ambassadorship is that you, you, you still sub subscri uh, subscribe to the laws of the country of the land that you come from. 
although you're operating in a different place. And wherever you are, you have diplomatic immunity. Amen? That means, because of your diplomatic um, you know, position, you enjoy certain benefits that ordinary citizens of that country doesn't enjoy. Amen? So today, I want to say to you, you have diplomatic immunity. You're a citizen of heaven. Amen? Here on the earth. That means you don't, you don't just live by the, the culture and the norm of the place you find yourself in. You understand you sus- subscribe to a higher calling and a higher standard. Let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. So I want to speak today on God uses people. That means God's way of blessing or be, be bringing blessings into your life is God uses people to bless you. God uses people to speak into your life. God uses people to pour out into your life. That's very important for us to understand, that God uses people. So, so we don't take people for granted. Amen? We don't take those that God sends to us for granted, but we, we appreciate, we understand, we receive them. Amen? The Bible says uh, we must receive those that God has sent us as angels of the Lord. Amen? That means sometimes the angel of the Lord comes packaged in a package that we sometimes don't recognize. Sometimes it's a package that we don't sometimes appreciate. Sometimes the package has some flaws. Now, how many of us like gifts? You can wave, right? You like gifts? No one likes gifts in this church. Amen? So when Christmas is coming, I'll open all your gifts. Amen. So when your family is giving you gifts, I'll open it. I'll choose which one I want. You like gifts? Michelle likes gifts. I, I, know, I know Michelle likes gifts. Michelle likes gifts. Amen. Uh, uh, Diane, you like gifts, is it? So she's saying all the boys, you know, you'll, you'll need to buy gifts for your mother. You know. So you know, your, your mom likes gifts. Auntie Diane, you like gifts too. Is it? Auntie get, Diane says yes. She's not wanting anyone to open her gift. She, she's saying she likes gifts. Amen. All of us like gifts, you know. But how many of you know girl, uh, ladies know certain gifts? You know the small box? That's the best gift, is it? The small square box is the best gift. What are you expecting when you get a small square box? You're expecting a ring. Not, uh, not the one that comes from Lucky Packer, not the... Not the one they buy, <laughs> you know, you get, you're not, you're not looking for, what that, Lovisa gift, you know, you, you're looking for, it must be gold, it must have a diamond, Tanzanite, you can take Tanzanite, they say there's a new, there's a new precious stone, they call them Morgan stones, they, uh, they, they, it's a new one they discovered, very close to a diamond, it's really appreciating in value. So, you know, there's some ideas. There's some ideas. You know, when, you, when you're making your mark for what you want for Christmas, you know, that's a Morgan stone. They say, very nice. It's a pinkish stone. Very close. Very hardy. You know? Now, don't let them put Zorowski and say it's Morgan stone. You know, <laughs> there's a difference. But you expect certain things when you look at the package. When you get the rectangular flat box, you know, you know what? It, 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 those ones there, you expect a chain. Tennis bracelet. Okay. Oh, yeah. My wife is sending messages here. Uh, <laughs> you, expect, you expect a hand chain. You expect something of, of, of value because it's, it's the box, right? What happens when you get a gift wrapped up in newspaper? That is, you're asking for hating. Asking for problems, right? But we, we ask... We look at the, the package and sometimes we determine what the gift would be. Imagine if you get a, a square box and it's empty. You won't be too pleased. But sometimes in the newspaper and in the brown paper you can get some nice gifts. Is it? It's a surprise. You, you know, you play the game sometimes. I know you play the game. Uh, our family plays it in Christmas Day. You know, they wrap gifts in, in paper, but it's like, you know, and you have to pass it around. And so sometimes when you open the wrapping, 
you get a gift, sometimes you open it and you only got paper. You know? So, so the reality is you have to keep opening the layers. And as you come through the different layers, you find the eventual gift. I want you to understand today that sometimes the gift that God sends to you may come packaged in a way that you don't expect it. It comes packaged in, it comes in a package and sometimes because of the package you may think, you may not want to, you may not like the gift because you, you're more interested in the package and you're saying, okay, I don't have any expectations because of the package. Amen. Now we spoke about a lot of gifts for the ladies but do you know what gift you like? I know what gift you like. Yeah, he's looking for another car. Uh, uh, <laughs> a bike. Oh Jesus. <laughs> Amen. But it's so she already knows what gift to get you. But the reality is that all of us like a gift. But I also want you to don't discard the package it comes in, because sometimes there are words. There are people that bring impartations into our life that may come in a package that we may not expect. But because we look at the package, we discard the gift. So I want you today to purpose that the people that God sends into your life, that bring gifts that can impart something into your life, when they do it, sometimes we discard the package. We look at the flaws. We look at the mistakes. I want to share with you today two points. One, God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Secondly, God uses broken vessels. It seems like sometimes the package is not perfect, but the gift is. I want you to understand that his strength is made perfect in our weakness. That the glory may be to God. Let's read, let's read from the scriptures. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse six to seven. And this is the, 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 the scripture for our church. For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the God's glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Now, this is the verse of the church. Now we have this treasure in clay jars so that the extraordinary power may be from God and not ourselves. So we understand that God wants to shine through us. And he calls us, the King James says, earthen vessels. We have this power in earthen vessels, clay vessels. You know, one, thing's about, one thing about clay is that clay is never perfect. There's always perfections. Anything that is made out of clay, you'll find slight imperfections in it. But it's through the process you are made. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27. He said, instead, God has chosen what is the foolish in the world to shame the wise. God has chosen what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God has chosen the insignificant, despised in the world. What is viewed as nothing, to bring to nothing that which is viewed as something. So that no one would boast in his presence. It is from him that you are in Christ, who has become the wisdom for God for us. For our, our righteousness, sanctification redemption in order that as it is written let no one boast so let sorry let the one who boasts boast in the lord let no one boast in himself amen so i want you to understand this god is not saying don't celebrate what he's doing in your life don't celebrate the successes in your life he's saying when you're celebrating it, acknowledge who God is and what he has done through you. Amen? That there is sometimes the point where we we've almost feel as if we've arrived by our own, uh, uh, our own hands, by our own work, by our own effort. But we start to realize it is God's strength made perfect in us. 
God's strength made perfect in weakness. And sometimes there's so much emphasis on being perfect that we sometimes discard and we look down and we walk in condemnation because of the imperfections. Now I want us to understand we all got imperfections. It's not an excuse to stay there. It's an acknowledgement that there's an ability for God to work in that area of my life to perfect in me. So as God perfects in you, he makes you stronger, he makes you better. So he says, I will choose the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. He says, I will use the weak things to shame the strong. He says, I will use the insignificant, despised things to begin to bring to nothing that which seems to be something. God says, I will use that which has been rejected. I do not know whether you've gone through some things in your life that have left you rejected. You know, all of us have scars and blemishes. We've gone through life. We've gone through some experiences that have made us not necessarily all the time like who we've become or what we've become or the mistakes that we've made sometimes follows us. And sometimes we feel so, so, so diminished, so small, that sometimes we feel like, can we do anything? And in that, in that moment, God's word comes to us and says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ. We walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That's why the Bible also comes to us and says, no, no man, no longer after the flesh, but know them after the spirit. Now, the reason why is because when we come into salvation, we all come with a past and we all come with a history. We all come with some things that has happened in our lives. And it doesn't necessarily have to be sin issues. So, you know, so quickly in church we just think sin, you know. But sometimes we go through self-esteem, low self-esteem. Some of us have experienced brokenness. and Some of us come into church and we, we, we are living in unforgiveness. Some of us, uh, you know, we, we, we judge others and yet, and, 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 and yet in our own hearts we, 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 we're dealing with some challenges these are not sin issues these are character flaws some of us have, have depending on the environment you grew up in it could have had an impact on you and so in this he's, he's saying you, you're coming with all these things the stone the, the Bible says of Jesus the stone which the builders have rejected have become the chief cornerstone that means the world has a perspective of you. They have had a, a perspective of Jesus. So you are going to be no different. The world will have a perspective of you. But the reality is the Bible says that which the world has rejected has become the chief cornerstone. I want you to understand if you look at your life sometimes there's things that shame us and there's things that, uh, that, that, that make us don't feel so good about ourselves. But you know what the Bible says, God, when God places your ha his hand upon you, he says, no, no man, no longer after the flesh. You see, some of us know each other by, if you grew up in the same family, we know each other. We know what we did, how we grew up, what we, the mistakes, we know how we live. Sometimes even in our own homes and in our marriages, sometimes we don't allow our spouses to grow beyond the mistakes that they've made. Some of us don't allow our children to grow beyond the, the, the experiences and even the mistakes that they've made. And all the time we keep remembering them by the negative stuff that has happened. But God says, no, no man, no longer after the flesh, but know them after the spirit. That means that which is born of flesh is flesh, that which is born of spirit is spirit. We have to understand how to draw, make that distinction. Because if you're going to do that, we're going to begin to hold people back in the past. Some of us, sometimes our relationships don't mature because we know each other. You know, sometimes there's some friendships you outgrow. And you outgrow it not because of the friendship, but you outgrow it because the friendship only is stuck in a moment. I do not know about you, but when we were growing up, there was a stage when I, I used to play a, little, a lot of sport and I... I used to play a, li a little basketball and play some soccer, and I was part of a team, you know. And you know, those days, you you know, you want to you want to identify with your group. And so, in identifying with your group, you used to dress in a certain way, you know. Those times, you used to wear the press-on earrings, you know. Th those are Neil knows about that one. Uh, and then, 
But we used to have denim jackets. And in the back of the denim jacket, we used to have a big eagle. Now, I saved up some money. You know, and, and one of our friend's mother, she embroidered the eagle in the back of the jacket. But that jacket was not known in the house. My father didn't know about the jacket. You know? You know, you wait when you're with your, with your brass, you know, you're with, your, with your friends. So you so, so wait. And you just identify in a certain way. And then, the one day we went to excursion and I was wearing my jacket because, you know, you have to be with your friends. And I wore it and I came home. And that day I was walking home and my father was coming from work, so he was walking ahead of me. He just turned around, he looked at me and then he carried on walking. So he went into the house first and I didn't think anything. I'm following him and I walked in. As I walked in the door, the next thing, pah! What happened here? You know, when I, when I woke up from the ground, you know, I realized, hey, I said, Dad, what happened? What's this? You know? Hey, he pressed, he pressed. Caught me by my ears. You want to be a gangster? What's this jacket? He burnt my jacket that day. Amen? But sometimes there's, you, you need to identify with certain things. The need to belong. Sometimes we know each other. We identified with that. But now, 30 years later, 35 years later, no jacket, no friend. Those guys we were supposed to be diehards. We were supposed to be together for the rest of our life. Now we don't even know where each other lives anymore. Sometimes some friendships you would outlive, outgrow. Some people only know you for a certain season in your life. Don't take one season and carry it through every part of your life. It just belongs in a certain place. Some, some things have been for our learning. Some things have been for our shaping. Now, why do I share this with you? Because God uses people. And people are complicated by nature. In Genesis 26, we see how God uses Isaac. There's nothing phenomenal about Isaac. Isaac is just the, 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 the son of, of Abraham. He's the, he's the son of promise. But Isaac doesn't do much in his life. Actually, Isaac had some flaws. He had some mistakes. But God still used him. You know, he, uh, God used him. Uh, he was a person that had some challenges in his life. He had some trials in his life. He also had some fears. I mean... Isaac was so fearful that when he was going from, from, from Canaan and he was going to Gerar, when they were going to live amongst the Philistines because there was a famine in the land, he said, he said to his wife, Rebecca, please, don't tell them you're my wife. Tell them you're my sister. Because you're so beautiful, they may kill me for you. So you are scared. So he had some fears. He was also... He had some family problems. Isaac had some family problems. He had two children, Jacob and Esau. And Jacob and Esau were fighting each other from the time they were in, the, in Rebekah's womb. They were fighting each other. And for the rest of their life, they kept fighting each other. Jake, uh, Isaac even loved uh, Esau. And yet Esau was the more rebellious one. Esau was the one that, uh, that, that he married uh, women that were, uh, that were serving uh, godless women, that were serving uh, pagan gods. And yet, Isaac still loved him. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes all of us in our homes got those special children. Another one, the one that requires more love. I only got one son, he's looking at me. But you, 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 you know that sometimes you got that, that, that one child in, 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 the, in the family that requires more attention than the others. Now you don't have, to, don't have to look at them. You can just look straight at me, it's fine. It's fine. We all know that. You know? We all got that one person in the family. Now you know there's other names they call them. You know? Sometimes they call them black sheep. You know? 
it's not about the darkness or anything. It's just, it's just the things they do is sometimes dark. But the reality is that sometimes you have that one child that you they say. Now, for, is, uh, for Isaac, Esau was that child. He was the one that required a lot of the love of Isaac. I mean, Isaac was prepared to look past the mistakes of Esau and still give him a firstborn blessing. That was his desire. You know, sometimes even as parents, we can have blind spots to our children. You know, you know, you, you know, you know I'm, amongst, I, I, I'm learning that amongst Indian mothers and parents and even African parents, they love their sons. You know? Their daughters can do everything. But their sons... The daughters can take care of them, do everything, be there for them, everything. But the one day the son just comes and shows up with one small cake. Oh, my son. Is it? Now, I'm, not, I'm talking from experience. My, my sisters do a lot for my mom. Right? But the moment I go, finish for all of them. They, they, I think she forget their name. Forget everything they do. She'll phone everybody and say, hey, you know, Gerald came and he brought this for me. Is it? But that's... Mothers do that, eh? I don't know whether we're special. <laughs> Maybe they're using the word special for us. But sometimes, for whatever reason, sometimes we have blind spots in our relationship. So that means Isaac by nature was not perfect. Didn't have it all together. But still God used it. Why does God sometimes use imperfect people? People that have some challenges. Have some character flaws. Because him using you is not dependent on you. He chose you. You didn't choose him. And he chooses us irrespective of our flaws and our weaknesses. He chooses us because he sees something in us that we sometimes don't even see in ourselves. So he loves us. I want you to know today that you are loved of God. I want you to know that you are special to God. I want you to know that God will use you even sometimes in spite of you. God uses us sometimes in spite of us. There are some anointed men and women of God that God uses and even sometimes we have to understand that the power is of God and not of us. That the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, he says, let, if anyone boasts, let them boast in the Lord. Why does God use sometimes ordinary vessels, flawed vessels, m m vessels that have some mistakes in them because so that the glory may be of him and not of us? Amen? So I want you to know, irrespective of your journey, God can use you too. Amen. He, like he used I, Isaac. The only condition for God using you is be obedient to his purpose. Be obedient for him to do what he wants to do in your life. The second example is Gideon. In, in Judges chapter 6, we, we introduced to Gideon. Gideon is, uh, is threshing wheat at the wine press. He, we, we see he's in hiding God comes to him and the angel of the Lord says to him, you mighty man of valor. And he's, he's saying, no, no, no. How, who are you calling mighty man of valor? I'm the least in, my, in our tribe. Our tribe is the least in Israel. Our, my family is the least in my tribe. I'm the least in my family. And you're saying mighty man of valor. He says, I, I've got a lot of weaknesses. I've got a lot of inadequacies. I'm not you. Uh, I, I'm nobody. And God says, I'm going to use you. Amen. And God uses Gideon to bring a mighty victory over the Midianites. But we see the weaknesses of Gideon. The first thing he does when God gives him, uh, gives him the mandate, he, he tests God. He puts a fleece out and he says, God, if, if, if the, the fleece is wet and the ground is dry, I know it's you. The next day he comes, it's, it's the way he asked it. Then he said, no, no, the next day I want the fleece to be dry and the ground to be wet and then I know it's you. You see, 
He needed reassurance. Sometimes, because of our low self-esteem, we need a reassurance. Sometimes you may be in a relationship with someone, you may be in a marriage with someone that has some weaknesses. And if their weaknesses is low self-esteem, the best gift you can give them is self-assurance. Build their self-esteem. Build that person up. Sometimes you may be thinking, hey, why this person behaves this way? You have to look at what they need. Loving somebody takes giving them what they need, not what you need. It's a secret to building a good marriage. Amen. The secret to giving is loving the person the way they need to be loved, not how you need to be loved. That's very important. So God had to come and reassure uh, 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 Gideon, and he reassures him by manifesting his power. But then he goes and he finds 30,000 men. You see, because sometimes, sometimes people that have low self-esteem need a lot of people and things around them to reassure them. And God says, I'll whittle it down to 300. Then, I, then God says to him, you're not going to go in fighting with the sword, but take clay jars and take trumpets. And the declaration he had to make, he says, and the, and the sword of the Lord is with Gideon. That means he was saying, God is going to wield his sword. All we have to do is break the clay jars, let the light shine, blow the trumpet. God's going to fight the battle. God brings a victory through a man that battled his own low self-esteem. God gave him one of the greatest victories in scripture. And it became fulfilled in his life, you mighty man of valor. Sometimes there's been prophetic words spoken over your life. And when it was spoken over your life, you said, no, 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 this is not for me, it's for somebody else. Because you know yourself. But I want you to know, he, the one that created you knows you better than yourself. God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. God uses weak and broken vessels and he handpicks them for his purpose. God uses broken vessels, putting them back together, piecing them back together. I want you to understand, some of us, if it was not for the grace of God, we would not be able to do the things that we are doing. God's hand has been upon us. Sometimes we didn't deserve it. We do not know why God did it, but he did it anyway. And I want you to know, God did it for your good. So in these, why does God use weak, broken, flawed people? Because they're relatable. You see, people that have weaknesses, you can relate to others that have weaknesses. God used them because he could identify with them. I mean, when I looked at Jesus' disciples, he had a disciple like Peter. The, this guy was like a street kid. Rough around the edges. All the time Jesus is walking with him. And, and, and Jesus says upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. He said of Peter. Uh, he says flesh and blood did not reveal this. But my father which is in heaven. He, he's saying. He said Peter there's something special about you. But yet Peter was still rough around the edges. In the fact that when. When the Roman soldiers came, he was the one who pulled out a knife, cut off the ears of Malchus. I mean, this guy is still carrying a knife. He's walking with Jesus. I mean, there's no fish for him to gut. He must have been missing cutting something, you know. So when, when the, he said, oh, my moment, he said, you know. Sometimes there are some people that come to church and, you know, when we look at them, we look at them, they're a little rough around the edges. They're not the, you know, they're not the normal, typical church kind of person. And we say, hey, you know, this one. And then all of a sudden, a word of the Lord comes and says, oh, my hand is upon you. God has called you. And you're saying, hey, you know, that one, pastor. Maybe this one, yeah, that one. And sometimes we discard the word because we look at the package. 
So I want you to understand God uses people that he also need, he uses people that are in need. He uses people that know that they need a savior. You see, sometimes people that are broken, people that are mad, they press into God more deeper than people that think they got it all together. Don't deceive yourself. Sometimes in order to cover our weaknesses, we, we accentuate our strengths. We try to mask our weaknesses. I want you to be vulnerable to God. Understand that his strength is made perfect in weakness. That's why the Bible says when I'm, when I'm weak, I can say I'm strong. When I'm poor, I can say I'm rich. Because I boast in the Lord. It's not about what I see. But then he also chooses people that are flawed. Because he, he says because there's no cause for them to boast in themselves. That's why he says, let anyone that boasts, boast in the Lord. Sometimes we can boast in our skills, we can boast in our accolades, we can boast in our achievement, we can boast in our, you know, our careers, we can boast in our, sorry. We can boast in our <clears throat> education. We can boast in our skills. We can boast in all that we have accumulated around us. But those are indications of God's hand at work in us. God says if we boast in anything, let us boast in him. But sometimes God uses broken vessels. Because there's no need for any special qualification for God to use you. Amen. All he's looking for is faithful, available, teachable, teachable vessels. So it's not about your gift. It's about the grace of God at work in you. Just remember you're a jar of clay in the hands of the Lord. And as a jar of clay in the hands of the Lord, you, you're on the potter's wheel. Let him shape you, mold you into that which he wants you to be. Don't have a preconceived idea of what you want to do. Because God has chosen you. This is what John 15, 16 says. He says, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. Sometimes we live through the shame of our lives, you know, the mistakes of our past. A whole lot of challenges that we've had, a whole lot of dysfunctions. You could have had a dysfunctional childhood. You could have made some wrong decisions in your life. But in everything, even in the lowest moments of your life, I want you to know God has chosen you. And you may ask, why has God chosen me? Because he sees something in you that you may not see. There's an old song that they used to sing in church. They sing, it says something beautiful, something good. All my confusions... He understood. All I had to offer him was brokenness and strife. But he made something beautiful of my life. I want you to know God wants to make something beautiful of your life. And so no matter what the confusion, no matter what the journey has, and what has happened in the journey of your life that has brought you to this point, it doesn't matter. You have an opportunity to step into the divine purpose of God for your life. But something has to change. You have to bring yourself in the obedience of God. You have to bring yourself and say, God, I'm trusting you. I'm believing you. Amen. I want you to know that God is with you. God picks up, uses broken vessels throughout scripture. God uses Moses. And Moses, when God chose him, he says, God, send someone with me because I'm, I cannot speak. We know Moses had a speech impediment, but God used him. Joseph, his own family rejected him, but God used him. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are slaves to Babylon, and God uses them. 
Some of you, when you look at your life, you will say it's only by the grace of God. Some of us are at jobs doing work that we are not qualified for. But the door opened for us. We're not educated for certain things, but God used us. You may not be the best skilled. You may not be the most liked. I mean, I know a few years ago when, when Lorenzo was going into, into marketing, it wasn't even a field you would have ever thought you would go into. And, uh, and it's a field you excel at. You know? Your journey in life is in the hand of the Lord. So never depend on your own strength. Say, Lord, your strength is made perfect in me. Your grace. So when you're enjoying the victories, celebrate it. You know, I was talking with Joash. Uh, I, I, I think there's a culture of young people nowadays that have a struggle sometimes celebrating. And sometimes when he does well, he, he doesn't celebrate it. You know, he's, he's thinking about how he could have done better. And I said, you know, sometimes, you know why we celebrate? We celebrate because we are thanking God. I didn't think I could make it, but you made it possible. So that's, that's why we celebrate. So if you think, sometimes we choose not to celebrate because we feel this is not our best, but it's not about your best, it's about Him. So celebrate. I want you to get into a culture of celebrating victories, even small victories, because smaller victories become, become bigger victories eventually. Amen? Don't ever discard any part of your journey. Let's just bow our heads together. God chooses the despised, the foolish, the weak to be his servants. He chooses those that will do his will. And so today, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord watch over you. May he make his countenance his glory to shine upon you. When I look at the people that God has used, He's placed His hand upon them. So today, you seated here in this church, there may be some people, young people, that are going to do extraordinary things in our community, in the country, in the marketplace. But right now, you're in the place where you feel like, man, things are not going my way. Some of you have been, may have been struggling for years. But I'm here to say to you, let God have his perfect will in your life. Just remain faithful to him. Remain obedient to him. He's about to turn things around in your favor. I pray that God will open the door that you're trusting him to open. The door that seems closed, a door of employment, a door of opportunity. May the Lord catapult you and do things beyond your thinking and beyond your imagination. But when God starts to use you, may you never ever walk away from his plan, from his design and his plan for your life. May you grow from strength to strength. May you grow from glory to glory. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Kashamanda laba satai. Ribasando lobo shete. Rebeke la manda raba satai lebehende. Lord, let healing come to people. May they not despise the words that will come into their lives. The transforming words. Thank you for the people that you have connected us and you have placed in our lives. Sometimes. We, we look at the vessel and we discard the message. But Lord, today, open our eyes. Open our eyes. In Jesus' name. Speak to your people, Lord. By the power of your, by the power of your grace. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen.